Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and in this video I'm going to cover all of the interesting features of the HTC Touch Pro. There's a lot of little things that HTC has done with this device that makes it really interesting. So I'm going to start off with the case, and this case is more like a sleeve. It's made out of leather, and it actually has two purposes. One purpose is to keep the device protected, of course, so that if you drop it, you don't get a scratch on your beautiful Touch Pro. Um, and the second purpose is to actually clean the device. Uh, the sleeve has very little clearance, if you can see that, so that when I push out the device, it rubs against the flush screen and takes off a little bit of surface debris, if there is any. If you can see inside of the case, it's a nice felt that does a good job at cleaning the screen. Now, obviously, it's not going to clean off facial grease or, um, you know, smudges or that kind of thing. That requires more agitation, but for surface debris or little pieces of dust, it does a great job at keeping the screen clean. So that's a really good reason to use the, the case that it comes with. Now, like the Touch Diamond, the HTC Touch Pro has a magnetic stylus such that when you remove the stylus, the screen comes out of standby, goes on automatically, which is a really good feature so that you don't have to take the extra step of pressing the power button at the top of the device. Okay, now that we're closer in, I want to show you more about TouchFlow 3D. TouchFlow 3D is HTC's acclaimed interface for Windows Mobile that replaces the Today's screen, and it does a lot of interesting things. This is the first screen. It's the home screen. And what you can do with this is you can see your call history. If you click on that, you can see your appointments, or you can go straight into your calendar for the day. And you can flick your finger downward, if you or upward, actually, to get a different clock if you don't like the massive clock and you want to see more appointments. Uh, but for me, I like to see my next appointment, and that's, that's about it. So having this big clock is really nice, and as you just saw, the animation is really catchy too. Uh, you, can, you can navigate through TouchFlow 3D through this bar at the bottom. And as you can see, there are a lot of icons. And what I was afraid of is that I would have to slide my finger numerous times to get to all of the icons, but HTC has designed this such that you only have to move your finger left to right one time to get from beginning to the end. Okay, so let me take you through some of these tabs. The next tab I'm going to go to is the People's tab, and I can get there, of course, by pressing the button down here, or I'm going to actually swipe to the side, and it goes right to the side. And from here, I can dial a favorite person, or I can flip through the pictures that I've added, kind of like uh, album art, or, or cover flow, as they call it. Uh, let me go to the next tab here, which is Messaging. So this shows me my text messages, and I can flip my, my stylus upward, or of course I can do that with my finger, to see my messages, my SMS that have come through, and if I want to read the message in full, I can click on the message. If I want to make a new message, I click this button right here. And going over the next tab, we have email, and email, just like SMS, allows you to preview the message that's there, although with mail, it gives you a nicer visual representation. You can actually preview the piece of email as if it was inside of an envelope. It's very beautiful. And from here, you can click on the message to go into Outlook Mobile if you want to do some, some work in there. Uh, going over to the next tab, we have Internet. It's a dedicated Internet tab. We can scroll to the bottom here and see all of the favorites that we have added for Opera Mobile. I'll cover a little bit about Opera Mobile in a few minutes. And from here, we can launch the browser with this big icon on the top. Sliding over to the side, we have pictures and video, which will look into your device for any pictures that you've taken, or look into your storage card if you have any photos, and it will put them all in here. And of course, you can slide your mouse, or I keep calling it a mouse, you can slide your stylus up to flip through the pictures in a very beautiful way. If you find a picture you like, you can just tap on it with your finger, and it will bring open the gallery. And the gallery is one of the places that the... Uh, accelerometer works, so it'll automatically reorient the picture. So let me get out of the gallery and go to the next tab. The next tab is the music tab, and like the photo tab, it will search your device for music that you have, and if we click on library here, we can kind of use this really nice looking touch flow based uh, playlist control, so we can see the albums that we have on the device, and we can click on one of those or scroll with our finger to see various ones. It's just, it's just really refined. Um, and we can also make playlists, we can filter by genres and all that sort of thing. And it just integrates so nicely throughout the whole device. So I'm going to get out of here by clicking Now Playing and it'll take me back to the main screen. And of course you can play songs right from the screen, which is pretty neat too. The next tab is Weather. 
and it needs to be updated. Right now it says updating because the moon's not out. It's actually during the daytime over here in Philadelphia. And the animations for the, uh, you saw it right there, are beautiful for the weather. And I hear, I haven't seen it yet, but when it's raining, you'll actually get a animation of a wiper blade come across the screen to wipe off droplets. So that's really well done. And down here we have a five-day forecast if you want to see more of what's happening in the weather. And if you press more, it will take you to the AccuWeather.com homepage through Opera Mobile so you can get, you know, a 10-day forecast or the current humidity or something like that. And then over in the settings tab, we get access to just some basic settings. We can change the wallpaper, uh, sync all of the data on the device, turn on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, that sort of thing. And if we go over to the final tab, it's a program launcher. And you can scroll through the programs. You can add new program shortcuts. And if you click all programs, you don't get the start menu. You get this much better looking list of programs that is very finger friendly. And you can scroll through them and see all of the programs that are included on the device. So that is really well done. So you may be wondering, what does TouchFlow 3D look in landscape? Because this has a slide-out keyboard and the screen rotates to landscape. Well, I'll tell you what, there really is no touch, TouchFlow 3D in landscape. Much to my surprise, look, look at this. Look, look what it looks like. This is TouchFlow 3D in landscape. I'm really not sure why HTC didn't put the same experience in the landscape orientation that they did in the portrait orientation. It's completely different. Uh, it's it's kind of silly, actually. Um, but that's what we have to work which, with, which is fine. If you want to use the real TouchFlow 3D interface, you have to keep it in portrait mode to do that. Okay, so let's go into the programs list. And I'm going to get out my stylus to do this. I like the precision of the stylus. And you can see the start menu is arranged in a nice finger-friendly fashion. There are dividers between all of the entries. Now, a note on screen rotation, because you just saw the screen rotate, and um, if you watch any other videos that I've made, you know that I hate slow screen rotation, and Windows Mobile exhibits very slow screen rotation. Well, take a look at uh, how, it, how it is on the Touch Pro. Let me dismiss this email first. Okay, watch this. Pretty snappy. It's a little slower going into portrait. It's pretty fast. Let me compare that to the, um, the HTC Kaiser. So let me get that out here. I've got it over here. I've got the same menu open. I'll zoom out even more so we can kind of get some perspective. And uh, let me try this at the same time. The keyboard slide out in different ways. So one, two, three. It's funny because sometimes the Touch Pro is faster and sometimes the, um, the Kaiser is faster. But overall, I'd say definitely the, uh, the Touch Pro has a fast screen rotation speed, which I am pleased about. Okay, let's get back in here. Now, in the start menu and throughout the entire operating system, you can flick scroll, which is really good because it has a touch flush... Nope, opened up FM radio. It is a touch flush screen, and so to feel for the uh, scroll bar is kind of annoying. So having that capability to flick scroll is pretty good. It's not as good as the iPhone. I don't think it ever will be in Windows Mobile until major changes are made to the platform. But it's it's pretty good, and it's precise, and you can move just a little bit if you want, and it, you don't really get accidental key presses. So let's take a look at a few of the programs on the device that uh, stand out a little bit and are of interest. So going down, we have you know a communications manager, which is especially well done graphically for the Touch Pro. Uh, I'm going to turn on Wi-Fi so that I can show you a demonstration of Opera Mobile. Uh, the camera application is beautiful. I'm going to show you that in the review. It's just very fast. The icons are easy to decipher. Everything is laid out very well. Um, we have standard things like Google Maps. We have a printing utility. We have this cool program called MP3 Trimmer. And what this allows you to do is look at any MP3 that you have on your device. So I'm going to go to Open. Uh, I'm going to go to my storage card. I'll choose um, any track really. And what it allows you to do is play the mp3 and stop it when you want and you get what is called a little segment and you can apply this segment to your phone as a ringtone and it works really well. I mean in about two minutes I got a um, whoops in about two minutes, I got a, a segment from a song and I applied it as my ringtone and it worked great. And what you just saw up there, I want to show you too. If you click any of the notifications, it brings up this big finger-friendly finger um, list of what the notifications are. Which is great because if you want to check you know, your Wi-Fi status, you don't have to be really precise with your finger to get in on that. You can just click on the top bar and go right to your uh, Wi-Fi status.
So that's a, a really good addition to making it finger friendly. Going down the list, we have Opera Browser. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I want to show you the YouTube application because it's another thing that's really well done. It's as good as it, as is the YouTube application on the iPhone. So right now it's downloading, and I'm just going to go to search, and I'm going to search for um, Pocket Now. Of course, I could use the slide out keyboard, but um, I don't really want to rotate the device right now. So it's searching. And here we have the matches, and it comes up pretty fast. And I'm going to click on the first one I see, and it goes into the other orientation. And it looks very similar to the YouTube application on the iPhone. And the quality is fantastic. If you've been around YouTube lately, you know that there are settings for high-quality video, um, which makes the clarity much better. And up here, if you go to this button at the top, you can choose whether it's high quality or low quality. I have it on auto select right now. So that is the YouTube application. So now I want to show you Opera Mobile 9.5, which is revered as one of the best mobile browsers ever made. Um, here I've got CNET.com loading. It's, a, it's quite a complex page. It's got a lot of tables. It's got a lot of content and that sort of thing. And if you want to zoom in on a column, you can double tap and it resizes the column so that you can see it nicely. It wraps it around. Uh, you can move around the page as if it was a piece of paper. Double click to zoom back out. And because there's an accelerometer built into the Touch Pro, if you flip over the device to landscape, it will reorient the screen. Although sometimes it's, it does it a little bit slowly. It's not as sensitive as it should be, uh, but generally it works well. So Opera Mobile 9.5 is especially well done, and I'm glad that HTC has included it on this device. And the last thing I want to do is take you through the settings of the device to see if there's anything interesting in there. Here in the settings, we can make a sound for the keyboard sliding open. Uh, you know, some people find that annoying, but I actually like it. Um, going down the list, nothing else interesting in here. If you go into the settings for the Today screen, you see that TouchFlow 3D right now is the only entry that is set as on, and that is why it's displaying. Going over to System, we have um, some usual things. We have a calibration utility for the G-Sensor, or for the accelerometer. And again, there's not that many places in the operating system where the G-Sensor is used, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, this allows you to calibrate it so that it's, you know, exactly right vertically and horizontally and that sort of thing. Unlike the Omnia, which um, can orient itself in any screen throughout the operating system. Now if we go down, let's take a look at memory. I've been opening a bunch of programs, but even then I have 103 megabytes of program memory left and there's a good amount of storage space, but of course I have a storage card installed, which is probably what you want to do if you get a Touch Pro. Going down the list, we have some settings for touch flow, not that many. We can enable the start menu, um, we can enable the sound when finger scrolling and that sort of thing. And finally on the bottom here, we have TV out, and because I don't have the accessory, I can't show you that. HTC should include the TV out cable, just like iMate did with the 9502 professional device. And over in connections, nothing really here except... What was really great is when I put my SIM card into the Touch Pro, it automatically configured itself for AT&T. And I know a lot of people will really appreciate that. And it says country and operator, AT&T or T-Mobile. So if you're in the United States, th this will work. I am getting an edge signal right now. Unfortunately, no 3G, though. And one more thing that I want to show you that's pretty cool is how this uh, touch-sensitive scroll D-pad works. So let me go into a program where I can adjust the font size. So I will go into messaging, and I will... Um, Let's see, I'll go into Outlook, and here. Here's a message that came on the device, actually. It's called uh, Email Tips and Tricks. And so what I can do is I can take my finger, and I can just graze it around this touch-sensitive uh, scrolling mechanism, and it resizes the text. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't scroll the text, which is what I would like it to do, but this is a good way to, on the fly, change the size of text in a lot of different screens on the Touch Pro. So it's, it's quite useful in that way. And again, touch, touch scrolling works in a lot of applications. It works in Outlook Mobile, of course, which is quite helpful when reading through a long email. So that is it for the HTC Touch Pro. It's definitely one of the most refined Windows Mobile devices that exists. Um, that is not to say that there aren't some flaws with it, and I'll cover all of those in the review coming up in a few days, so check back at pocketnow.com for the detailed and very thorough review on the HTC Touch Pro. That's it for now.